a homemade engine, and the ingenuity of two American tinkerers and inventors produce in 1903 the first controlled flight in a heavier-than-air craft. Wilbur and Orville Wright, partners in their father's bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio, spent three years designing and building an airplane. They planned to take it to the village of Kitty Hawk on the outer banks of North Carolina. Their study of the air currents there indicate that they are conducive to getting their new plane off the ground. Wilbur is the first to take the controls. Orville follows. One newspaper reports a flight of three miles, but in reality, the plane stays in the air for 12 seconds, traveling 120 feet. At first, many doubt the reports of the brothers' success. Others doubt they can repeat their flight. So, Wilbur takes their show on the road to Paris, France. There, in full view of a film camera and invited guests, he once more soars into the wild blue yonder. The century is just beginning, and man has already begun his conquest of the skies. There are only 8,000 cars in the United States in 1900. There are no traffic jams, but there are traffic tickets, one for exceeding the speed limit of eight miles per hour. Among those trying to build a better car is the self-taught engineer and inventor Henry Ford. To raise money for his business ventures, the young Ford begins building racing cars. He is able to start his own company in Highland Park, Michigan in 1903. Here, Ford begins to rethink the automobile industry. The car, he says, should be a popular means of transportation, not a luxury item. His first successful car is the Model A. Then in 1908, the first Model T, which his wife calls the Tin Lizzie. What he does next, however, transforms the world. In order to bring the price of the car down, he starts an assembly line. He doesn't invent it, he develops it. And the Industrial Revolution takes a giant leap forward. Mass producing a cheaper car, he cuts the price from $1,000 to $300. He changes the look of cities, the shape of suburbia, the role of oil in international politics, and even the air we breathe. Thomas Edison, for whom Ford once worked, scoffs at the idea of a gas-driven car. Too noisy, too stinky, he tells Ford. In 1902, after inventing the alkaline battery, Edison works at developing the electric car. But it takes a thousand pound battery to move a car 90 miles. So Edison abandons the project. It is men like Edison and Teddy Roosevelt, Henry Ford and the Wright brothers who helped define the first decade of the new century as an American one. Their energy and a new and expansive sense of freedom make America very attractive to Europeans struggling against oppression.